Microsoft with Xbox understands the position that they're in, it's the fan base that simply won't accept it. When Sony was pitching the PlayStation 2, they were talking about killing PC graphics outright. I can remember Seamus Blackley giving an interview where he said he had heard that and he thought it was just ridiculous because the PC just constantly iterates on itself and they had an idea to take on Sony and PlayStation with a console. It was almost something outside and separate from Microsoft, and it really was once they pitched it, but it was the original Xbox. It introduced things we hadn't seen in consoles ever, a hard drive, and eventually online network play that, of course, we'd have to pay for later on down the line in the form of a service. Go figure, it is Microsoft. But the idea that Seamus Blackley and Ed Freeze had for that system was one that would be powerful and would also follow the template of what, what makes consoles successful in the space. And here's where Microsoft went wrong. If you remember, Ed Freeze gave an interview where he said once he had heard from upper management that the Xbox had to strive for profitability among everything else, just profitability. Ed Freeze was a guy who knew you had to build a catalog of first party IP. You had to create characters and worlds just like Sony was doing. Now, when they introduced the first PlayStation, they did exactly what the first Xbox did. Go around trying to find anybody and everybody who would make games for them because they were new in the market. And once you get that foot in the door, that's when you have to start building the house. You can't rely on renters constantly renting. You have to build. And that's the mistake that Ed Freeze noticed early on, and that's why he left, because Microsoft was more concerned instantly with profitability and not about a long-term approach of building a healthy ecosystem with a first party around hardware. Sony was in the same position when they were forced to introduce the PlayStation 1. Nintendo stabbed them in the back and decided to go with Philips CDI for their CD add-on, which never happened for the Nintendo system. And Sony was left with this CD-based system and they decided to launch the PlayStation. Now, with that PlayStation, they knew they had to go out and find people to create games for them. And that's what they did. But here's where they did it right. They were in the same position that the original Xbox was in at that point. They had people making games for them, but then they decided it's time to invest in ourselves internally. It's time to create teams or partner with teams that later on down the line yield results. And those results are games. Those results are characters. Those results are worlds that identify solely with the platform. That's how you build out a hardware-based ecosystem. Microsoft approached the Xbox correctly with Ed Freeze and Seamus Blackley, but then they decided that, well, we're a software company, we're not a hardware company, so let's take the software-based approach and strategy and try and force it into this hardware-based centric uh, ecosystem. It's taking the round peg and forcing it into a square hole. It just didn't work. And then later on down the line, they recognized with the Xbox 360, hey, Halo's great, let's buy them. Hey, Gears is great, let's buy them. But let's not make them do anything else. Let's not form partnerships with other third parties that yield games, that yield characters and worlds. Let's just force this relationship. And now we have Microsoft in the position where, yes, their hardware sells, but they're in third place again. And yes, they're a software-based company with hardware, and they're putting all of their eggs in this one big Game Pass basket. Game Pass is a service. It's not a piece of hardware, and a service cannot exist locked to hardware. So if you have your own hardware, it's almost counterintuitive to selling a lot of hardware because you're locking that system, you're locking that service to the hardware. It's like Netflix deciding, well, you know what? We're everywhere but now we're gonna make a Netflix box that locks Netflix to a box. And if you buy our Netflix box, it's great for us, but Netflix is still gonna be everywhere. People are just gonna say, why do I need the box if your whole strategy is centered around just this service? And it's interesting to point out that what Microsoft is doing now in purchasing studios and trying to form relationships, they're only doing because they have a service, a service-based company, Windows. They're only investing, they're only looking to leapfrog the competition now 
because they have a service. They didn't do it when they only had a piece of hardware and a box and they entered the console space. They didn't do what Seamus Blackley knew they had to do. They didn't do what Ed Freeze knew they had to do. They're only doing it now to feed a service when they should have done it a long time ago with the original Xbox to feed a piece of hardware. They'd be in a much better position now. They're playing catch up and they're only playing catch up now because they want to push a service. They're not interested in their hardware. They're not even interested in Xbox anymore. It's just one big advertisement for Game Pass. Now you might hear all this and say, well, that's the future. Microsoft made the right move. That's the future. And I'm here to tell you, Obviously, it's not the future because people are choosing hardware. They're choosing Nintendo Switches, they're choosing PlayStation 5s, and they're choosing those systems because they invested in themselves a long time ago when it was time to invest in yourself, when it was time to create games, when it was time to create characters, when it was time to create worlds and pull people in to that box because that box then spreads out and creates its own ecosystem. You just have a service. The service lives and dies by how many places it is, and it it's not living on Xbox. It has to live everywhere, like Hulu, like Netflix, like Amazon Prime. None of those people have the Amazon Prime box or the Netflix box or the Hulu box. They have a service and they constantly have to feed that monster and that monster has to exist everywhere. They should have invested the way Sony did back in the day. They should have invested the way Nintendo did back in the day. and. Those two guys, Ed Freeze and Seamus Blackley, knew how to launch a console, knew what the Xbox hardware brand could be, and Microsoft simply just didn't care. But they care now because they've got something that matches who they are, and that's a service-based company. Now, even with all of those mistakes in the past, creating a piece of hardware and not actually following a successful template that's laid out before you by Sony and by Nintendo, I think the absolute right thing for them to do, Microsoft to do, is pivot to a subscription-based service. I don't feel that the Xbox hardware is going to be around a long time. I don't feel that Microsoft is all in on hardware, but I think they're definitely all in with software. You don't even hear about Xbox Xbox anymore in the term of a piece of hardware you hear Xbox Game Pass Xbox doesn't even almost exist anymore as a physical product and the fans just parody whatever or parrot whatever Microsoft says first it's about exclusives then it's not about exclusives then it's about the world's most powerful then the power doesn't even matter anymore now it's about a checklist of things in a service how many games are here we've got 10 here's 11 we've got 20 here's 21 that's the game it's looking at a list and kind of sort of maybe playing the games and just subscribing every month. I don't agree with it. I think the hardware should be first and foremost, primarily the focus for Microsoft. And the way to drive that ecosystem is to create great experiences on that hardware, build the consumer trust in the brand. When they think about Xbox hardware, they should think about great first party games and they just don't now. And maybe if they do have great first party games in the future, it's not gonna matter because nobody thinks about the hardware anymore. They just think, well, Game Pass has great games in it, subscribe. You've gotta subscribe everywhere else, but Xbox hardware, you've got to be on the hardware that's the most successful and that's PlayStation and that's Nintendo. And there's a reason why in the future, a service like Game Pass has to be on hardware. It has to exist somewhere. Hardware is important. If you're sitting there saying hardware doesn't matter anymore, Netflix wouldn't exist unless there were places for it to exist, like a television, like a phone, like a tablet. And whoever has the most sold televisions or the most sold tablets or the most sold phones is going to succeed. And that service is going to succeed. They set themselves up in this symbiotic relationship where they need somebody else to be successful rather than themselves with a great piece of hardware built up over time, invested in using that huge cash reserve that they have that everyone talks about now when it comes to Game Pass, they could have done it way back when and been in a much better position. The position that they're in now, they put themselves in, they understand it. It's the fans that for some reason just won't accept it. Could Game Pass be the de facto gaming service that everyone has in the future? Yes. Is Xbox going to be the de facto platform piece of hardware that gamers buy in the future? Absolutely not. 
Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.